ஹாய் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் குட் ஈவினிங் ஒன் செகண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு மை சேனல் முகாம்பிகா நர்சிங் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி கேன் சி இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் கிறிஸ்டின்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் கார்டியோ வாஸ்குலர் சிஸ்டம் அவர் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கிறிஸ்டின் எ கிளைண்ட் இஸ் டு ஹேவ் எ ட்ரெட்மில் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் டெஸ்ட் ப்ரையர் டு த டெஸ்ட் த நர்ஸ் ரிவ்யூஸ் தி லெபோரட்ரி ரிப்போர்ட்ஸ் த நர்ஸ் ஷுட் ரிப்போர்ட் விச் எலிவேட்டட் லெபோரட்ரி வேல்யூ டு தி ஹெல்த் கேர் ப்ரொவைடர் ப்ரையர் டு ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் டெஸ்ட் அண்ட் ஆர் ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆப்ஷன் ஏ கொலஸ்ட்ரோல் லெவல் ஆப்ஷன் பி எரித்ரோசெட் செடிமெண்டேஷன் ரேட் ஆப்ஷன் சி ப்ரோத்ரோமின் டைம் ஆப்ஷன் டி ட்ரோபோனின் லெவல் ஹியர் த கொஸ்டின் இஸ் எ பேஷண்ட் இஸ் கோயிங் ஃபார் ஏ ட்ரெட்மில் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் டெஸ்ட் வாட் இஸ் திஸ் ட்ரெட்மில் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் டெஸ்ட் மீன்ஸ் இட் இஸ் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி எக்ஸசைஸ் டாலரன்ஸ் டெஸ்ட் விச் ஹெல்ப்ஸ் டு இவாலுவேட் தி ஃபங்க்ஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி ஹார்ட் ஹியர் த கொஸ்டின் Before the test or prior to the test, nurse reviews or nurse check the lab report of the patient. Which lab value, the elevated or increased value of which report will inform to the physician? That is our question. The elevated troponin level should be reported. Okay. Why it is reported we can see elevated troponin level indicates myocardial damage if the client to walk on a treadmill for stress testing would be contraindicated with evidence of recent myocardial injury and could further extend the damage so in order to prevent the myocardial damage check the troponin level value if it is normal we can do this test okay so the correct answer is option d troponin level and the next question a nurse is caring for a client immediately following insertion of a permanent pacemaker via the right subclavian vein approach the nurse best prevents pacemaker lead dislodgement by options option a inspecting the incision site dressing for bleeding and the incision for approximation option b limiting the client right arm activity and preventing the client reaching above shoulder level well, option c assisting the client with getting out of the bed and ambulating with a walker option d ordering a stat chest x ray following return from the implant procedure here the question is the nurse is caring for a patient with permanent pacemaker that is immediately after the procedure she is caring that patient and this procedure is done via the right subclavian vein subclavian vein is the vein of upper extremities okay here the question is the nurse prevent the pacemaker lead dislodgement by what she will do to prevent the lead dislodgement as i already told subclavian vein is the vein of upper extremities so limiting the arm and shoulder activity initially and up to 24 hours after the procedure will helps to prevent lead dislodgement so here the correct answer will come option b limiting the client right arm activity and preventing the client reaching above shoulder level option b is the correct answer and the next question the normal jugular venous pressure is options option a less than 3 cm of water option b less than 9 cm of water option c less than 12 cm of water and option d less than 15 cm of water the normal jvp or jugular venous pressure is 6 to 8 cm of water here that option is not there so 9 we can choose less than 9 cm of water okay option b is the correct answer move to the next question a client with chest pain is prescribed intravenous nitroglycerin which finding is greatest concern for the nurse initiating nitroglycerin drip options option a serum potassium level is 3.5 milli equivalent per liter option b blood pressure is 88 by 46 mm of hg option c st elevation is present on the electrocardiogram option d heart rate is 61 beats per minute here the question is a patient with chest pain is prescribed iv nitroglycerin okay so while giving this iv nitroglycerin what findings will concern the nurse 
nitroglycerin is an example of vasodilator it can able to decrease the blood pressure so while administering the blood pressure we have to check the bp of the patient here the correct answer is option b blood pressure is 88 by 46 mm of hg if the blood pressure is lower means we will think or we will inform to the physician okay move on to the next question sinus bradycardia is defined as the heart rate is options option a less than 40 per minute option b less than 50 per minute option c less than 60 per minute option d less than 70 per minute bradycardia means decrease heart rate sinus bradycardia means the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute option c is the correct answer and the next question is a nurse is caring for a client diagnosed with an anterior myocardial infarction 2 days ago on assessment the nurse identifies a systolic murmur at the apex what should the nurse do first options option a assess for changes in vital signs option b draw an arterial blood gas option c evaluate heart sound with the client leaning forward option d obtain a 12 lead ecg here the question is a nurse is caring for a client with anterior wall mi and this diagnosis or this happened for this patient two days ago that is anterior mi was diagnosed on two days before while doing assessment the nurse identifies a systolic murmur at the apex what she should do first that is our question here firstly she should obtain the vital signs that is as the changes in the vital signs will reflect the severity of the disease that is a sudden decrease in the cardiac output decrease in blood pressure decrease in heart rate decrease in respiration so she should check the bp heart rate respiration of the patient so in that she can identify the variation so she should inform this to physician So here the correct answer is assess for changes in vital signs option A is the correct answer firstly she should check the vital signs of the patient and then she should inform this to the physician move on to the next question mitral regurgitation is seen in options option A ventricular diastole option B ventricular systole option C atrial diastole option D atrial systole mitral regurgitation seen in case of ventricular systole option b is the correct answer and the next question damage to which heart chamber cause acute pulmonary edema options option a left atrium option b left ventricle option c right atrium option d right ventricle the damage to left ventricle cause pulmonary edema option b is the correct answer and the next question is the triad signs and symptoms seen in a cardiac tamponade is options option a tachycardia tachypnea tender hepatomegaly option b muffled heart sound distended neck vein hypotension option c stasis hypercoagulability vessel injury option d chest pain heart failure syncope question is which is the triad signs and symptom or main signs and symptom of cardiac tamponade here we can see the signs and symptoms patient may feels faintness shortness of breath anxiety and pain from decreased cardiac output then cough from pressure created in the trachea and distended neck vein from rising venous pressure then paradoxical pulse and muffled or distant heart sound among in our options we can select option b muffled heart sound distended neck veins and hypotension and the next question is a client with acute chest pain is receiving iv morphine sulfate which is an expected effect of morphine sulfate our options option a reduces myocardial oxygen consumption option b promote a reduction in respiratory rate option c prevent ventricular remodeling and option d all of this here the question is a patient with acute chest pain is getting iv morphine sulfate our question is what is the expected effect or what is the side effect of this morphine sulfate 
morphine sulfate is an example of analgesic and sedative here morphine sulfate act as an analgesic and sedative and it reduces myocardial oxygen consumption blood pressure and heart rate and also reduces anxiety and fear due to its sedative effect it can depress a respiration or it can reduces the, the respiratory rate this is the main side effect of this morphine sulfate so here our correct answer is option a reduces myocardial oxygen consumption and the next question is an older adult has a chest pain and shortness of breath the health care provider prescribes nitroglycerin tablets what should the nurse instruct the client to do options option a put the tablet under the tongue until it is absorbed option b swallow the tablet with 120 ml of water option c chew the tablet until it is dissolved option d place the tablet between the cheek and gum until it is disappear okay, the question is an older client with chest pain and shortness of birth is prescribed nitroglycerin tablet so while giving the tablet what instruction does the nurse will give to the client okay that is our question so the correct answer will come option a put the tablet under the tongue until it is absorbed the tablet is keeping sublingually so it will be absorbed easily so the correct answer is option a and the next question is s1 heart sound correspond to options option a closure of the aortic and pulmonary wall option b closure of the aortic wall option c closure of the mitral and tricuspid wall option d closure of the mitral wall s1 heart sound is produced due to the closure of the mitral and tricuspid wall option c is the correct answer and the next question is to heart sound correspond to options option a closure of the aortic and pulmonary wall option b closure of the aortic wall option c closure of the mitral and tricuspid wall option c closure of the mitral wall s2 heart sound is due to the closure of the aortic and pulmonary wall s1 heart sound is due to the closure of mitral and tricuspid wall here option a is the correct answer and the next question is the nurse notices that a client heart rate decreases from 63 to 50 beats per minute on the monitor what should the nurse do first our options option a administer atropin 0.5 mg iv push option b auscultate for abnormal heart sound option c prepare for transcutaneous pacing and option d take the client blood pressure okay, the question is a nurse notices that patient heart rate is decreases from 63 to 50 so what she should do first immediately she should check the patient blood pressure also if the heart rate is decreasing automatically there is a chance of decrease in the blood pressure so the nurse should take the client blood pressure then inform this to physician option d is the correct answer then after that if needed we can provide according to physician order we can administer iv atropin and or administer atropin okay so first the nurse should take the client blood pressure friends here we are preparing questions for rrb nursing officer exam also mhsrb and crpf nursing officer exam surely these questions will help for your studies if it is useful for your studies please subscribe my channel and share my videos to your friend circle